Hey folks, thanks for joining. My name is Dennis. A while ago, my wife asked me if I could build her an obelisk, and I had no idea what an obelisk was. I don't even think I heard the term obelisk in my entire lifetime. But I did some research, found out what they looked like, what they were used for, and this is the design that we came up with. I built this out of five-quarter cedar decking. The nominal size of five-quarter is one inch, and I think I used about three eight-footers for each one of these that I built. I built this one kind of on the fly. When I built the second one, I really wanted to use a lot more of a structured approach. And that allowed me to really batch out parts early on in the process. And it also helped me improve the accuracy of the placement of these rails, because you've got a lot of angles coming together and you need to account for that. This is the one I'm building in the video. Let me show you how it came about. So as I said, when making an obelisk, you have a lot of angles coming together. The front legs are angled towards each other, the back legs are angled towards each other, and at the same time, the front and back legs are angled towards each other. So trying to achieve a result so that the rails are consistent around all four sides is a challenge. To deal with that challenge, I first created a template so that each of the sides had the same angle, and I fastened that in place and used it for the creation of each side for the duration of the project. Once I had that in place, I went to work to dimension the legs. I made each of the legs one inch square and I was able to get all four legs out of one decking board. Making the legs a consistent dimension meant that all rails would be the same size, which made batching out all the rail parts really easy and really fast. In the first obelisk that I made, I made the front legs an inch and a quarter wide and one inch deep, and that just meant that the rails for the front were a different size than the rails for the sides, and so again, just trying to come up with a method to streamline the process. Also, in the first build, I did a lot of the layout on the fly while the build was in progress. In this build, I made my reference marks by taping together all four legs to lay out the distance between the rails on all four sides. And the reference marks I'm making here are creating a line that represents the bottom of the rail. I'm using a spacer block as well as one of the rails to do that. And I'll extend that line all around the four legs so that I have reference marks on all the outside edges of the legs. Now those are good baseline reference marks for the bottom of the rail. However, remember that the legs will be angled and so I need another reference mark that represents the angle of the placement of the rail so the rail is parallel to the ground. So to do that, I used a speed square to get the angle of the legs from the template and then use my bevel square to get the opposite angle. And then I could use that angle of the bevel square to mark all the legs so that when these legs are positioned at an angle in the template, those bevel lines are the lines I want to reference for placement of the rails. Again, much easier to do that when the legs are joined together like this and, and a lot more accurate as well. And the last layout line is where I created a reference that is a quarter inch from the outside edge of the legs to represent the amount of reveal between the edge of the rail and the edge of the leg. Once the layout was complete, I moved the front set of legs to the template to begin building that section of the obelisk. I'm referencing off the bottom of the template and making sure the legs are clamped tight to the template. Then I'll begin measuring the distance for each of the rails from top to bottom using my layout lines as reference points. With that done, I can move on to the rails. I didn't want to make the rails the full depth of the decking boards. I felt like they would be too heavy in terms of how they look. So I resawed the decking boards in half, cut the boards to width on a table saw, and finished up by cutting the rails to length on a miter saw. Because all four legs were the same dimension, I was able to batch cut the rails for all four sides, which was a big time saver. So while the upfront layout took a little longer, it helped to not only speed up the build process, but also increase the accuracy of the build as well. Now it was just a matter of tacking the rails to the legs. And for this, I used inch and a quarter, 18 gauge stainless steel brads. Once I finished one side, I inserted the remaining two legs in the template and tack the rails to the legs in the exact same way. Now that I had two sides complete, I needed to join both sides. I used the template once again to position the sides, and it was just a matter of joining one side to the other using the pre-cut rails, just as I did previously. And once that was done, I turned the assembly over and repeated the process. And here's where we are so far, but we're not done yet. We've got to spruce it up a bit more. Off camera, I dimensioned the verticals that will go between each of the legs. To do that, I resawed more decking and used a table saw to create half inch strips and then cut those strips to length at the miter saw. I marked the placement of the verticals with an angle that seemed right to me and tacked the top and bottom only first to check the look. And if it looked good, I tacked each vertical to each rail in the assembly.
When I finished one side, I followed the exact same process for the remaining three sides. And here you can see that a few enhancements make a really big difference to the end product. I wanted to make a shelf for the top of the assembly and the width exceeded the width of the boards I purchased so I had to join a few pieces of decking to achieve the size I wanted. I cut a few pieces on the miter saw, joined the ends on a jointer, glued up the pieces and let them sit for a while. When I removed the top, I cut it to size and then added a round over to the top of the shelf to ease the edges and soften the look a bit. And here you can see that I installed the shelves on both assemblies, one inch and a half stainless steel nail into each of the legs from the top. And here's a picture of one in the backyard. Uh, there's one more picture to follow. Thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.